Today I'm going to talk about proof by induction. Induction is one method of proof that can often be useful in various different branches of maths. And it's kind of like cheating. Well, it's not actually like cheating, but it feels like cheating sometimes. And it's kind of saying, if you reduce the problem to the previous one, and you've already done the previous one, then you're done. So perhaps we should first have an example to say what I mean by reducing the problem to the previous one. Here's an example. How many ways, how many ways are there of writing the numbers 1 up to n in different orders? How many ways are there of ordering the numbers 1 up to n? So for example, if n equals 2, then we get 1, 2, and 2, 1. If n equals 3, we have 1, 2, 3. So let's do this. When we're trying to write down lots of different things, we should try and do it in some sensible, um, we should use some sensible pattern to do it. So let's first start with all the ways beginning with 1. So we could have 1, 2, 3, or 1, 3, 2. So now let's start with all the ways beginning with 2. So if 2 is at the beginning, then here we can either have 1, 3, or we can have 3, 1. If 3 is at the beginning, then the other two numbers have to be 1 and 2, so we can either have 1, 2, or we can have 2, 1. So here the answer was 2. Here the answer is 6. OK, so let's try and do n equals 4. So first of all, let's do all the ones beginning with 1. So now we know that 1 is going first, so then we have to put 2, 3, and 4 in some order. And you might say to yourself, well, hang on a minute. If we have to put 2, 3, and 4 in order, that's like when we try to put 1, 2, 3 in order. So there should be six ways of writing 2, 3, 4 in order, right? So we get 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, 3, 3, 2, 4, 3, 4, 2, and then 4, 2, 3, and 4, 3, 2. So all of those can have a 1 at the beginning. So that's six ways. So now if we write down all the ways starting with 2, then you should think to yourself, oh, now I've got to put the numbers 1, 3, and 4 over here. And there should be six ways of doing that. So then we should have, um, we've kind of got 1, 3, and 4, and there are six ways of doing that, All right? So then if we start with 3, then we've got to put 1, 2, and 4 in some orders, and there are six ways of doing that. And then if we start with 4, then there are, we've got to put 1, 2, and 3 in some order, and there are six ways of doing that. So we have 6 beginning with 1, 6 beginning with 2, 6 beginning with 3, and 6 beginning with 4. So the answer is going to be 24. So can you see what the answer is going to be if we had to put five numbers in a row? Perhaps pause now and see if you can see what would happen. Can you see it? So what we did to get to here was we said we've now got to choose out of four ways of putting the first number down and then for each of those we know how many ways there are of ordering the last three numbers because we did that over here. So we multiplied that by four to get to there. So when we do n equals five, if we do n equals five, then we've got to first of all pick what the first number is going to be. Right? So if we um, over here, can I put it in and do n equals five? So we can either start with a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five. Okay, and then we've got to order the remaining four numbers. And we know how many ways there are of ordering four numbers, that's 24, right? So we'll have 24 ways here. We'll have 24 ways here. We'll have 24 ways here. 
we'll have 24 ways here, and we'll have 24 ways here. So we just have to multiply 24 by 5, and we get 120. So can you see what the next one is going to be? Well, we're going to have to multiply it by 6, aren't we? And then the next one, we're going to have to multiply it by 7. So the general answer for this looks like it's going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1, which we know as n factorial. So we've sort of seen how once we've done the one below, we knew we could do the one above. And so I haven't actually worked out what the answer would be for n equals you know, 234 or something. But I can use this method to show that this answer has to be true for every n. And that's basically true. That's what proof by induction means. So to do a proof by induction, you check a very, very low case. And then you check that you know how to just go up one from anywhere. So it's like saying, when a baby learns how to go upstairs, right, then they only have to learn how to go up one stair. And then as long as you can, you know, they, as long as you've put them at the bottom stair, they can go up one stair and they can go up another stair and then they can go up all stairs. So this is the same here. As long as we know how to go up one step and we know that we can get to the bottom step, then we know that we can get to any step that we want to. So that's how induction works. So let's just check it in this case. Oh, let me take all this off now. I'll leave the question up. So the claim, we claim that the answer is n factorial. And the proof, we say, is by induction. So we have to start by checking n equals 1. n equals 1, well clearly there's only one way of ordering the number 1. There's, there's clearly exactly one way, one way of ordering the number 1. So then, for the Step, we call that the inductive step or the induction step. The induction step. So what we do is that we assume we know how to order it for some for any k. So we assume that it's true for n equals k, and then deduce that it's true for n equals k plus 1. So the picture to have in your head is that we're trying to go upstairs. And as long as we know that for any step we can go on to the next one, where k is anything, then we know that we can always get upstairs to any number that we want. So what I'll do in the next video is finish this proof off and say what the general principle is.